Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make clouds using Photoshop, and then I'm going to show you uh, making clouds in Blit Paint. So, first off, I'm just going to have a regular brush, and I'm going to make a custom brush here. So, I'm going to go up to Window and Brush Settings, and by default, you've got spacing and all these different settings. So, I'm going to put the size quite big and put the hardness up to full, and I don't have to change much else make the spacing a bit more varied. Now I want to go to the shape dynamics and do a little bit of size jitter. Okay, I don't need much else there. Scattering both axes and just a little bit like that. Uh, everything else is fine, don't have to do much else with that. Now I'm just going to start drawing in some shapes. Now I'm using a Wacom pen, but this should work also with the mouse quite easily. And I guess the pressure does help for making these clouds a bit more rounded. Okay, so something like that. Now I'm going to click this little lock pixels here so that when I paint with colour I don't go out the lines like I paint here nothing happens only happens when I touch the existing pixels like that and because I'm using fill opacity here I can put the opacity down to say 50% Okay, and I can draw a kind of lighter tone over here. I don't want to overlap too much because it will darken that tone. Right, maybe just a little bit at the bottom. Okay, so there's your cloud, and I'm just going to turn off the lock pixels and select that. And I guess I could scale it down a bit just to smooth the edges. And I could also pixelate it if I choose a pixelate mosaic. But just make sure I've got everything unselected for that. And maybe I'll put this in its own layer. Let's see. Mosaic. And I choose the cell size. I'll do four for four pixels. And that's me got a little kind of pixel art version of that. Now, if I control click on this, control click first, then click the mask, and then alt click on the mask, I can see that there's some grayscale values in here. So, what I like to do is do control L, and I want to take away the, the anti aliasing here, these gray values. So, I'm just going to tighten up these areas around about the middle so they only get black and white okay that's pretty close and when I say okay and go back to this it's kept these edges a bit harder that's purely optional if you want that and um, it does help retain a kind of sharp pixel edge but if I undo that you can see it's nice and fluffy and I can I'll copy this around just holding alt and dragging and make some new clouds sets I'm just going to merge a few layers together just merge these ones as well now I don't have a lot of let's close that one there we go right and what I can do here is just pick some of this white tone and blend some of this away. And that's me got like an extra big cloud. Uh, it's a little bit similar here than to here, so I might want to make a little bit of a change. And don't worry that I've lost the 
mosaic effect, the pixel effect, I can bring that back quite easily just by choosing that same feature and that will bring that back. And I can make a whole bunch of assets that way if I wanted. So here's Blip Paint. This was made using Game Maker 2. And uh, I've tried to make everything a bit simpler than Photoshop for customizing brushes. So I'll choose the circle one here. And yeah, I can make some, you know, strokes like that. I can change the spacing just here. And I can do a little bit of size variation. Well, let me just get this ready for some clouds. That's actually not too bad. Right, I can turn this mouse mode off and that will give me pressure sensitivity, but just now it's affecting the opacity. So I can put opacity by pressure down and that will just keep that solid. And then we just affect the size by pressure. So we can use that to then draw in some nice clouds. Let's do the size variation a little bit smaller. Okay, so there's our cloud. Uh, if we want to make it go into pixel art, we can click this pixel shader here. And if you press seven, you can change the width or uh, density of the pixels. Uh, plus or minus will make them a bit more chunky. That's if you want that. But I'm just going to turn that off for now. And to lock pixels in here, it's this one. Uh, if you hover any, over any icon, it will tell you what it does down the bottom. Okay, so that's gonna lock the pixels and I'm gonna choose, uh, I'm gonna brighten this palette up a bit, and choose this color. I'm just gonna start painting in here. I can also set the opacity. And if I turn on mouse mode, that should stick to a kind of decent value. Right, I can pick some tones in here to help soften it up a bit. Now let's go for a slightly different blue. Okay, so in Blip Paint, you can grab a brush like this and that makes basically a new brush and I can you know, plot this down if I turn off this mode backspace to clear everything and make sure that I've got white as my main color then that will keep the tones of that sprite I can do size variation I can do flippy X to make it randomize if it's facing left or right If I click this here, or P, this is perspective mode. This gives me this line where everything fades in. Now you can see it flips the sprite upside down. Uh, and that's just, uh, it's just part of the calculation. Now to get over that, you can rotate a couple of times. So if you click this 90 degrees twice, that'll fix this and this is now the right way up and it fades into the distance in terms of size. So you can make these nice horizons. If you want to change the X scale, you can do that here to make them a bit uh, narrower. And then you can increase the size. So you see here as you get closer to you like that, they get bigger. You make some nice cloudy skies. Okay, turn that mode off and let's rotate that back. You can also do a little bit of rotational range if you want to. It just gives it a little scatter, but you really get that. Okay, so I'm going to make this quite big. Let's plop a few in here. We've got the size variation. And what I can do is I can go back to a nice soft brush like this one. Let's see, there's a better one than that. Yeah, this one here. And if I click smudge mode, this will 
attempt to pick nearby colours and you kind of end up just brushing with them and you can blend things together. I'm just going to put on, uh, turn this off so that I've got size by pressure. And it's just a way of blending stuff together if you wanted that. You can save the full image and it will save this uh, for future use and you can load it back in. So yeah, that's up to you. So thanks for watching this video and see you in the next one. Bye.